Hello and welcome, this is Angie. Thank you for joining me for another card making tutorial. Today we're going to make another light up card, this time using multiple SMD LED lights. Here's a demonstration of the card in action. So the equipment you'll require to get started are two card fronts and a side folding note card. These are approximately four and a quarter by five and a half inches. You'll also require some silver glitter cardstock, some silver mirror cardstock, and a piece of vellum. This should be large enough to fold in half and fit behind the die that you're using as your central focal point. I also keep some typing paper on standby. The die I'm using is a large diamond and I've got an engagement ring. I'll be using the diamond from that and the words shine and bright. Next you'll be needing a stencil, a spatula and some texture paste and I recommend having a bucket on standby filled with water to soak your equipment immediately after use for easy cleaning. I'll be using my sponge dobbers, some Versamark ink, clear glitter embossing powder and my heat gun. For the paper circuit you'll require some conductive copper tape, a CR2032 button cell battery or any 3 volt battery will do your SMD 5050 LEDs. You'll notice on these ones that I have already marked the positive side to make it easier for me as I'm working on my project later. You'll require some super glue or packing tape to hold your LEDs down, a bone folder and a pair of scissors. For decorations I'll be using some sequins and some perfect pearls and water. And now to get started I'm grabbing one of the card fronts popping my diamond shaped die in the middle of that piece of paper, securing it with some washi tape and then running that through my die cutting machine. Then I'm going to grab my silver mirror cardstock and run the die through again. This will be the piece I inlay into the card front that I've cut earlier. And lastly, I'm going to use the silver glitter cardstock to run the words shine and bright through and also that engagement ring die. As you can see, we've got all the pieces cut for our card front and we're ready to get to work. I grab the card front and my stencil, deciding on the best placement to really make it look like there's rays of light shining out from that diamond. When I'm happy with the placement, I'll grab my washi tape you notice I pop that on the back of my hand to remove some of the stick. This just makes it easier and um, ensures that I'll be less likely to cause damage to my cardstock when I later remove that. So I'm securing my stencil down with that washi tape and then I'm going to secure my paper to my work surface. Once everything's secure, I just grab my texture paste and my spatula and get to work spreading that through the stencil. I'm working from the outside in to make sure that I don't get it anywhere else except through the stencil space and I'm not focusing too much at the centre as that's actually um, where the hole has been die cut. I'm more concerned about from the die cut out. Just about done, I'm just making sure I'm getting in every nook and cranny and there's no gaps or air bubbles or lumps or anything like that. Just smoothing that out as best I can. Once I'm happy, I clean off my spatula and pop that straight in my bucket of water. Then I'm gently peeling the washi tape back on itself and the big reveal removing the stencil. And then I'll proceed to clean my work surface and my equipment while I leave my card front to dry. 
I've now come back and given that some time to dry and I'm now grabbing my diamond die cut and the card front picking up my spare card front and marking out the positions for the SMD lights. Now that I know the placement of the lights, I'm going to mark out where the battery will go and draw up my paper circuit. I'm starting along where the lights will go so that I can make sure to get that copper line very close to where the SMDs will go. They're very small lights that we're working with. Um, if you haven't used these before, please check out my other tutorial which has um, really detailed step-by-step -step paper circuit instructions. Now that I'm happy with my circuit, I'm securing my switch. Now this needs to be big enough to house your battery and fit some foam tape around all the edges to stop the battery from slipping out. As you can see I'm just securing that in place and once that dries that will be sufficient for our switch. So next I'm getting out my conductive copper tape. I'm measuring approximately how much it will require to complete the circuit. To avoid measuring this out twice and knowing that the circuit is the same size for the positive as it is for the negative, I'm just going to cut down the middle so that I can use the one piece halved for the positive side of the circuit and the other piece halved for the negative side of the circuit. I'm peeling up the adhesive backing and following along the positive line doesn't matter which one you start with, positive or negative, but I just tend to start with the positive first. Doing my sharp turn. There's lots of YouTube tutorials to teach you how to do this. It just takes some practice. And following that line nice and closely, making sure that the, um, the copper tape is going to sit very close to where those lights need to go popping it down over the switch and then cutting off the excess and then I just grab my bone folder to really burnish that down to make sure that there will be a good flow of that current for the lights later. Once I'm happy with that I'll start the same process for the negative side of the circuit and I'll run that one under the switch rather than over and one side of the switch will be for the bottom or the negative side of the battery and the top part will be for the positive and that's where you will push the switch down to activate the lights. Now that the paper circuit's complete, I've tested the SMDs. I'm happy with how those are working. So I'm just using some packing tape to apply pressure and secure the lights in place. And we're ready to move on to the next step. I'm double checking that those lights are placed correctly where I wanted them through the diamond die cut. And then I'm just quickly testing out whether I'm going to use just the vellum double layered or whether I'm also going to use the packing paper, sorry, typing paper. And I'm actually happy with how the light is dispersing just with the two layers of vellum. So now that my card front and the texture paste is completely dry, I'm grabbing a scrap piece of paper and I'm now going to use my sponge dobbers, my Versamark and my stencil to apply that wow sparkle embossing powder to add some real sparkle and shine. I'm doing this so late in the process because I wanted to ensure the texture paste was 100% dry before bringing any heat to it to avoid bubbling. This could be the look that you like, however I wanted to avoid it in this instance and I like the smooth look once it's heated. So my heat gun is in the background running nice and hot 
and I'm bringing that to the embossing powder and I'm heading from both the front and the back to just avoid any warping and now I'm adhering my diamond to the double layer of vellum and then I'm going to adhere that onto the card front using some Ranger Multimedia Matte as you can see on screen Once I'm happy with the placement of the die cut inlay with the diamond and the vellum I'm just grabbing the words shine and bright and adhering those in the required places on the card front. I'm using the range of multimedia matte again. Now that I'm happy with the placement of everything I'm popping the card front over the paper circuit part using the diamond from the engagement ring to place directly over the battery switch so that you know where to press to turn the lights on. Then I'm using some iridescent and silver sequins scattered over the card with Ranger Multimedia Matte as I know that will keep the sequins in place and they won't fall off or disappear. I've used a double layer of foam tape all around the base which has the paper circuit on and I'm now adhering the card front and I'm now using my ATG or advanced tape glider to secure the card front onto the card base and this completes our project for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on our next tutorial. Bye.